Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is anybody glad to be here today? Oh, I hear an amen. Anybody really glad that God woke you up this morning and started you on your way? God is a good God, and he's greatly, I said greatly, greatly to be praised. You know I say it every Sunday, from the rising of the sun to the setting of that same sun, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. This week I've been reading in Exodus, this scripture just, just leaped out at me, it said, this is Exodus 4 and 31, the NIV version, it says, and when, the, when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and they worshiped. Hallelujah. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them, hallelujah, and seen their misery, they bowed and worshiped him. Hallelujah. That's Exodus 4 31. Isn't it a good thing to know that God is concerned about you and he sees your misery, whatever you're going through? Hallelujah. He's been doing it from ages to ages to ages. He doesn't change. Somebody say he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Is anybody glad about it? Hallelujah. Come on, let's go before the throne of grace. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the bright sunshine. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the changing of the weathers. Thank you for the changing of the seasons. We're here to experience it, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for being our air that we breathe, Lord. We thank you for being omniscient, God, the God that knows every situation in this room, wherever they may be watching. God, you know every issue, every concern. God, we thank you, Lord, for being omnipresent. You're everywhere. Hallelujah. You have dispatched angels, hallelujah, to walk with beside us, God, and keep us. That is the benefit of being a believer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being omnipotent. You're all-powerful. Just having you there, God, makes the difference in our life, God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we might smile on the outside, but somebody might be going through on the inside, and you're the God that knows it. Hallelujah. God, we need you today in this service, God. We thank you for these frontline worshipers, God, who woke up early, Lord, just to give you glory, honor, and praise. God, bless them. Help them to know that without a doubt, they've been revived when they leave this place. God, anoint this praise team. God, they might sing to the power of God might come down. Anoint these musicians. Yes, we thank you for their skill and their ability. But God, we need the anointing power that breaks yokes, God. On the high sound assemble string, keyboard, and the organ, God. Anoint us afresh, God. Help us to put our issues and concerns aside and bless your people. You did not come to be served, but you came to serve. And that's what we're here to do today, God, just to serve, God. We thank you, Lord, for the videographers, the sound man, the security, God. Oh, Father God, and those that press their way out, God, have your way in our lives today, God. Oh, God, anoint the man of God that will stand in the place of Peter today, Jesus. Anoint his tongue like the pen of a ready writer, ready to proclaim your word, Jesus, that lives may be changed. My lives may be changed and going another way, God. Holler, that repentance might happen. Hallelujah. Salvation might happen, God. Oh, God, help them to type in, God, and say, what must I do to be saved? That's why we're here. Not out of religiosity, God, but just, Lord Jesus, to see someone give their life to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you need is two or three gathered in your name, and you said you would be in the midst, God. We need you in the midst, God. We need you in the midst, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we praise your name, God. We thank you, Lord, for what we will experience today. Have your way, God. And we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, everybody ought to praise the Lord with us and give us glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, God. And we praise your name. Come on, I don't hear anybody saying nothing. Come on and open your mouth and give God glory. Come on, let's walk together, everybody. Come on, let's move together. Wherever you are, get off that couch. Get out of that bed and give God glory. Believe it, shout worthy. I didn't hear nobody shout worthy. Come on, here we go. Let's sing it right here. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Come on, sing it, oh Lord. Oh Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise you. We praise. 
I thought about all those times that I was walking around in the days. But today I stand before you with nothing else but pray. Oh Lord, oh Lord.
So sometimes when it's dreary outside, you start dragging when you wake up in the morning. But I dare you to get in position to just give God praise on today. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We worship you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We make you bigger than any circumstance we may find ourselves in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, like the children say. I didn't say excited. I said I'm excited, amen, to be here on this morning. For the Lord woke me up this morning and started me on my way. When I think about all that's going on in our world, in our community, in our country, I just want to give God thanks and praise for another day that he has given to me. How about you this morning? Well, welcome again. We're glad you tuned in to join Anointed Temple of Praise Outreach Ministries Church. We're located at 3939 Riverdale Road in the great city of Memphis, Tennessee. For those of you who are visiting with us this morning, we thank you for stopping by for this powerful hour of praise and worship. Uh, we want to remind you that as a Christian church, Disciples of Christ, each Sunday, we commemorate uh, the Lord by remembering, as he has asked us to do, uh, his sacrifice on the cross by partaking of uh, symbols of his broken body, which is bread, and his shed blood, which is the cup. Uh, so we ask you to prepare your communion at this time so that at the end of service, you might be able to commune with us. A couple of reminders. Uh, I know some of you uh, uh, leave prior to the end of the service for announcements, but don't forget this afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m., we will have our uh, harvest candy drive through for our children. Amen. So get the load the car up, load the van up with those kids, the grandchildren, the neighborhood children, and drive on through our A-top parking lot. 2 o'clock p.m. from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we will be uh, giving away candy to the children. So load up the cars and vehicles, bring them on through. And one more reminder, on next week, don't forget to move your clock or set your clock one hour back. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, set your clock back one hour before you go to bed on Saturday night because we will uh, experience a time change. Now, if it was left up to me, y'all, I would not change the time because I don't want to add another hour to 2020. But because I am not in charge, amen, please remember to fall back on next week. Again, thank you and welcome to our service on today. October is National Clergy Appreciation Month. It's a great time to encourage our pastor and show him how much we appreciate his hard work and dedication to kingdom building. We hope you are able to drive by the church, wave, and encourage Dr. Murray following our virtual worship service on Sunday, October 18th from 11.15 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. If you can't drive by, please show your appreciation by mail, text, phone, card, or cash app. We appreciate and love our pastor and wish him God's strength and blessings for many years to come. Ready to dive a little deeper into the word? Join us for Sunday School each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. We are growing and stretching as we add youth Sunday School classes beginning this month. So grab the kids and check your constant contact email for the Zoom login Sunday School information or call in at 646-558-8656. Y'all be sure to spread the word. Parents, don't forget to gather your children ages 2 to 11 for our new children's Bible story time each Tuesday at 6 p.m. What a great way for our children to learn about the love of God through the lessons, miracles, trials, and triumphs learned through Bible stories. 
Zoom in for a fun time in the Lord. Looking for a weekly boost? Dial in each Tuesday from 7 to 7.15 a.m. Central Time for Anointed Inspiration in the Morning with Dr. Murray and for Intercessory Prayer each Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. The call-in number is 605-475-3220. Access code 412-771-POUND. Power up with prayer each Tuesday and Wednesday. The student ministry is planning a Harvest drive through candy giveaway Sunday, October 25th from 2 to 3 p.m. You can participate by decorating your car or distributing candy or by providing candy donations to make this a successful event. Please purchase and drop off bags or individually wrapped candy to the church Monday through Thursday between the hours of 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thanks for your continued support. ATOP is blessed to have awesome first responders that make ministry possible. This month's spotlight is on the women's ministry. Under the leadership of Minister Deborah Burroughs, the women of ATOP gather to retreat, encourage, pray, and uplift each other. We certainly miss our monthly meetings, but we are still here to pray for you and encourage you during this difficult time. Have you completed the 2020 U.S. Census? The census results help determine how billions of dollars in federal funding flow into states and communities for hospitals, police and fire departments, schools, roads, and other resources. If you have not submitted your 2020 census, there's still time. The U.S. Census Bureau has extended the deadline until October 31st, 2020. Get yours in today. It can make a difference. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, and historic turnout is expected this year. If you're not registered to vote, the deadline is October 5th. Tennessee offers absentee ballots by mail to voters who will be unable to vote in person. Your absentee ballots should be received no later than Election Day, November 3rd. Go to www.shelbyvotes.com and request your absentee ballot today. The early voting period runs from Wednesday, October 14th to Thursday, October 29th, 2020. Make a plan now to vote absentee or to vote early. Don't forget, Anointed Temple of Praise is an early voting location. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This year, we hope you will be proactive by having your annual cancer screenings and encourage your family members and friends to do so. A top family, you are truly missed. Stay safe and have a blessed week. Good morning, A top. So excited to be here this morning. I miss being in this place and fellowshipping with my fellow A top members. So it's so good to be here today. Uh, I'll be very quick. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, Dr. Murray has been focusing on praying dangerous prayers, and we've come to a time now in our service where it's time for prayer. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 15 that God hears the prayers of the righteous, and then in James chapter 5, we find that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much, and when you translate that into the New Living Translation, it says the earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So let us go to God believing first and then pray that we pray with great power to produce some wonderful results. Let us bow. God, you are wonderful. You are our counselor. You are a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace. 
We enter your gates with thanksgiving and come into your courts with praise. We bless your holy name and we worship you now in spirit and in truth. God, as we come to this last quarter of the year, we are closing it out with a yet and still. While we complain, while we yet complain about the small matters, still you are with us. While we are frustrated about staying at home, still we are not consumed because your new mercies each day and your great faithfulness is before us. While we yet complain about gaining weight, still we are not hungry. While we yet lose our disciplines for fasting, praying, and worshiping, still your mercy endures forever and you are slow to anger. While we yet whine about clothes that no longer fit, still we are not naked. So God, our prayer today is that you forgive our sins as we rearrange our thoughts according to Psalm 23 to make us lie down in green pastures. Lead us beside the still waters and restore our souls. Lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. God, we pray that you forgive us our sins as we rearrange our thoughts according to Matthew 5 to love our enemies, bless those who curse us, do good to those who hate us, and Pray for those who spitefully use and persecute us. God, we pray that you forgive us our sins as we rearrange our thoughts according to Matthew 5 to simply let our yes be yes and our no be no. Today, God, we pray and we ask that you lay your hands on us, anoint us, and send your power on us that we might receive your touch, believing and knowing that you cause everything to work together for the good of those who love you and called according to your purpose for us. We believe, God, that every prayer we submit to you is not just heard, but that you will answer. And right now, God, we ask that, you ex that we accept your response. Give us the capacity to receive your answer because you know the thoughts you think toward us and they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. God, we prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us as we pray for a blessing of peace that passes all understanding. Prepare us to receive your blessings of power where we exercise our spiritual gifts without shame. If we are gifted to speak in tongues, put the bass in our voice. If we have the gift of wisdom, let us call a thing a thing. If we have the gift of laying on of hands, let us transfer godly healing and breakthroughs for your people. God, if we can see spiritual wickedness in high places and call the devil a liar to cancel out the tricks of the enemy, then, God, don't just let us talk a good game. Let us be about doing the work you called us to do. Let us not be afraid or ashamed. Let us not back down or stand down or be down. Let us be about our Father's business of laying on of hands and calling out that which is not like you, canceling out doubt and debt and resisting any kind a temptation. Let us be bold and show up because you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God, we implore you today to give us that kind of tenacity that we don't care what the devil is saying or what the demons are doing. We will not be bullied by what they say is normal. We will call sin, sin, and what is holy, we shall keep sacred. We come with this bold prayer believing, having faith, and knowing that the race is not given to the swift, nor power to the strong, but because, because time will, and change will happen to all of that. We know, God, that the race is, is for those of us who endure until the end, holding on to your unchanging hand, standing steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in your love. Now, God, as we bring this prayer to a close, we lift up your, our bereaved families and ask that you comfort them and keep them close to your heart. We lift up our sick, asking for healing and restoration. We lift up those who are shut in and ask that you just sit with them, God, and keep them company. God, I lift up Dr. Murray and First Lady Kim and the First Family, asking that you meet with them and sup with them and fill them up to overflow as they continue to work tire, tirelessly for this blessed house. 
Anoint them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet to be strong in the power of your might. Then God, thank you for every servant who makes this virtual experience possible. We're blessed to be able to offer ministry to your people and disciple those who are disillusioned and disconnected and distracted by worldly things. Thank you for the musicians. Thank you for the praise team. Thank you for the communications team. Thank you, God, for the media team. Thank you for security, and thank you for the committees who stay even after service to close the day. Bless each and every one of them, God, and their families for their commitment and their love for what they do for you. It is in the name of our resurrected, reigning, risen, returning Redeemer that we do give you, do, we, we do give you praise. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen.
and give God some praise if you can. If you're blessed and you know it, you ought to say amen. amen. Is there anybody who knows that they are blessed and if it had not been for the Lord on your side, somebody tell me where would we be? Come on, let's put our hands together wherever you might be. Even if you're still in bed, come on, wake up and give God some praise because he alone is worthy of all of our praise. We certainly praise God for truly this is indeed the day that he's made and we're determined to rejoice and be glad in it. It may be dreary on the outside, but the sun is so in, is shining on the inside. Somebody say amen. And so we thank God for his goodness and we thank him for his mercy. We thank him for his peace. And I'm blessed. Come on, type that in right there. Say, I'm blessed. That's right. You are blessed. And if you haven't typed it in, you're extremely blessed and you might not know it. But I decree and I declare today in the face of what the enemy is trying to do to me, I'm blessed and there's nothing the devil can do about it. Somebody say amen. We do thank God for this praise team. Come on, let's show some appreciation for them ushering us into the very presence of God here today. I know you're viewing it at home or wherever you might be, but it feels like church up in here, and we praise God for them singing to the glory of God and for them just allowing God's presence to be felt even in this place. 
And we're certainly grateful for these musicians, and we're grateful for Elder Christopher Paxton and how he continues to lead and how he continues to direct, and for all of those who are yet sharing in this service and working to make this happen. And thank Minister Kwali Seymour for that very powerful and yet dangerous prayer that she prayed here today. And of course, we give praise and honor to the First Lady, Lady Kim. Come on, let's give some thumbs up and some praise. And thank each of you for your contributions on last week. And for those of you who are sending cards and who are just remembering us doing this October uh, Pastors Appreciation Month. Well, there is a word found in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, Isaiah, the uh, sixth chapter, just one verse, and that's verse number eight, reading from the NIV version of the Bible, we find these words. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I send me. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We do thank you for this day, and we thank you for our lives. We thank you for your spirit's abiding presence, even in this place today. We thank you for what our ears have heard, our hearts have felt up until this point, and God, we feel your presence and your power, even in this place. So God, we pray that you will shake us now and awake us, Cause us to be in tune with what you are trying to get done in and through us. We ask you, Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said, Amen. The grass withereth and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to certainly welcome those who are viewing this particular worship experience. Even if you're not in the city of Memphis, we're certainly grateful for you taking time out to be a part of this particular worship experience. I want to talk for a few minutes here today from the thought, Dangerous Prayers, Part 3. Yeah, Dangerous Prayers, Part 3. And if there were a subtitle, it would be Send Me. Come on, somebody just type, send me. You know, we started this conversation several weeks ago talking about how the power of our relationship with God comes from our fellowship with him through prayer. And as I said then, and I'll say it again, there is a connection through prayer that gives us confidence in whatever it is we're going through. And it lets us know that everything is going to be all right. Something happens when we're in communication and when we're connecting with God, when we're going through difficulty, when we're going through trials, and yes, even tribulations. It gives us a blessed assurance that everything is going to be all right. I believe that we limit ourselves many times when it comes to the power that we possess in our prayer lives. And all too often, we find ourselves not stretching ourselves beyond our comfort zone. Hear me today and hear me clearly because God has not called us to be comfortable, nor has he called us to be conformable, but he called us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And if the truth be told, many times we settle for instead of expecting more when it comes to our connection with God through prayer. Let me say that again. I say many times we settle for instead of expecting more when it comes to our connection with God through prayer. Prayer, my brother, prayer, my sister, is our lifeline as believers. Prayer is the key, and it should be what we not only uh, expect God to get us out of a jam, but prayer should be what sustains us from day to day. And I've said this before, but whatever is gained in prayer must be maintained in prayer. In other words, we must continue to seek to ask God to give us the strength that we need even after we won some victories, because each victory will help you some other to win. 
But all too often we find ourselves praying the same old prayers over and over and over again. And guess what happens? We end up getting the same results. And so we pray safe prayers. Come on, be honest with yourself. We pray quick prayers. We pray sideline prayers. We pray comfort prayers, prayers that won't stretch us beyond our comfort zone. Prayers that keep us from risking our faith. Prayers that won't extend us beyond the ordinary. Prayers that won't put us on the, on the, in the line of fire. Prayers that won't allow us to be on the field and involved in the game. But I'm foolish enough to believe that God has called us to prayer. How many of you believe that today? Minister Qualice just reminded us that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. God has called us to prayer. Our lives depend on prayer. And not just to pray safe prayers, but to pray dangerous prayers. Aren't you tired of playing it safe with your faith? You know, last Sunday we talked about dangerous prayers part two, and we, we use that as a subtitle, Break Me, Blessedness on the Other Side of Brokenness. And we looked at a very familiar passage of scripture found in Mark's gospel when Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples and he was preparing to have that last meal with him. And, you know, as we talked about that last week, God uses our brokenness in many ways. He uses it to bring us closer to him, to push us into our purpose, and to develop a testimony. But today, somebody type today. Today, I want to talk about Send me. Let me ask this question. When was the last time you, you really prayed a dangerous prayer? Not a safe prayer, not a soft prayer, not a sideline prayer. Well, when was the last time you asked God to stretch you beyond yourself and do something special in you? What if instead of asking God to just do something for us, we pray a dangerous prayer? a self-denying prayer of availability to the Heavenly Father. You know, each week, Lady Kim and I, we are approached by someone, uh, either through social media or in person, or they call and they want us to pray for them. They're asking for prayer. And hear me today, we count it a privilege and we count it a joy to touch and agree with the people of God around what they are believing God to do for them. And I'm extremely grateful for a team of intercessors that are continually throughout the week lifting up prayer concerns. And they are praying around the needs of this house and around the needs of people that voice their concerns. The prayers may vary. Some people ask that God will heal their loved ones from cancer. Others pray for those who are having surgery and praying for those who are perhaps battling an addiction praying for recovery, praying for restoration. Others are praying for loved ones who might have been, have attracted uh, COVID-19. Others ask for prayer to, to help a neighbor find a job or to restore a, a broken marriage or students may ask for prayer to get them through school or to help them pay their tu tuition or to help them deal with the pain of a terrible divorce. Some people pray for their spouses. Others ask to, to, to help them find, uh, to help them as they go through and as they are hurting. Even though the, 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 the requests vary, people are asking God, watch this now, to do something for them or for a loved one. They'll say stuff like, God, help me. God, help me to deal with what I need to deal with. God, help someone I love. God, I need you. And if I ever needed you before, I need you right now. God, do something in this situation. God, show up. And when you show up, I need you to show out. Is that anybody's testimony? God, please hear my prayer. And, and we should definitely pray this way. Hear me today. We should definitely pray this way. We should always invite God's presence, God's power, God's peace to intervene in our lives. Would you agree with me on that? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself said 
that men ought to always pray and not faint. So we should ask God for miracles. When was the last time you asked God to do a miracle for you or for you to be a miracle? When was the last time you lifted up loved ones? We should lift up our loved ones and remind ourselves of how God can move in their lives. We should seek the Lord for all of our needs. Wouldn't you agree with me on that? But we shouldn't stop there. Somebody type, we shouldn't stop there. Listen to me clearly. I'm almost finished. What if we prayed perhaps the most dangerous prayer of all? Send me, Lord, use me. You know, in the book of Isaiah, you're familiar with this passage in the sixth chapter. Isaiah prayed such a prayer he prayed an un, unreserved prayer of availability in the presence of God. And the Old Testament prophet retells of his encounter with the Holy Ghost and the Holy One when God asked him, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Isaiah 6 and 8, we've already read it. And without knowing the details, without knowing when or without knowing where, Isaiah prayed this stunning life-altering prayer, here am I, send me. That leads me to my first point, message point number one, when God calls, answer. Yeah, when God calls, you ought to answer. Notice Isaiah didn't ask any details. He didn't ask God where. He didn't say when or what would happen. That's why this prayer can feel so dangerous. God, send me. God, use me. I'm not asking for any details. Have you ever prayed like that? I don't know what the benefits are going to be. I'm not even concerned about that. I don't know if it's going to be easy. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. I don't know how difficult it's going to be. But because of who you are, you are my God, you are my king, you are my savior, and I trust you. Because you have blessed me in the past and you've never failed me yet, because you are sovereign over the universe, God, I surrender my will to you, every part of me. Take my eyes and take my mind, take my mouth, take my ears, take my heart, take my hands and my feet and guide me towards your will. That's a dangerous prayer. I, I trust you, God. God, my answer is yes. Have you ever prayed like that? My answer is yes. Now, what's the question? <laughs> Long before you find out the question. Imagine if you prayed this way. Well, let me just pause, pose this question. Aren't you sick of safe prayers? Aren't you tired, my brother? Aren't you tired, my sister, of going through the motions when it comes to your prayer life? Living for things that don't really matter that much? Aren't you tired of majoring in the minors and minoring in the majors? Don't you despise half-hearted, lukewarm Christianity and lukewarm prayers? Then I dare you today to stretch out and pray a dangerous prayer. Perhaps even, here am I, Lord, send me. I'll go. Is that anybody's testimony today? I don't need to know the details. I don't need to know when. I don't need to know where. I don't need to go back and try to pack a bag or get ready for where you're going to send me. But God, here am I. Send me. But then message point number two, we must personalize the presence and attributes of God. If we're going to pray dangerous prayers, we must personalize the presence and attributes of God. If we're going to be released from a preoccupation with self and allow God to push us to the place where we can experience him like never before, then we must personalize the presence and the attributes of God. You know, Isaiah didn't pray in a vacuum. Y'all know that, don't you? It, it, it didn't come out of nowhere and for no reason. As a matter of fact, in the first Verse of that sixth chapter, Isaiah sets the context explaining his encounter with God. How God, how it took this encounter with God took place in the year that King Uzziah died. And if we're going to ask God to do something in us and for God to use us, 
then a genuine encounter with him goes a long way in trusting him. You can't just come to God with, with a, a prayer and then you haven't had an encounter with him. You can't just come to God and say, God, do it. I'm going to pray a dangerous prayer and you haven't experienced his presence. You haven't personalized his presence in your situation. Isaiah 6 and 1, he says, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And he goes on to say, and you, you're familiar with this. He says, his train did fill the temple. He didn't just read about God. God help me today. He didn't just hear others talk about God. But Isaiah, he saw the Lord. He ex experienced God's presence in a unique way. Isaiah saw the Lord, and, and, and in God's presence, Isaiah was stunned. He was shaken. He was astounded, if you will. God was high, and he was lifted up. God was on his throne. That's what Isaiah says. When was the last time you had such an encounter with God that it left you in awe of his glory and his holiness? Because when we become aware of his presence, guess what? We will never be the same. I said, when we become aware of his presence, I'm not talking about your friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever and whatever. But when we become aware of his presence, we will never be the same. We must feel his presence in a personal way. And then once that happens, we have a better understanding of who he is. He is the creator of the heavens and earth. Y'all know that, don't you? He is the God of glory. He is the great I am. He's the righteous father. Y'all know that these attributes. He is God. He is the fortress of our strength. He, he's the one in whom we depend on. He's the God of comfort. He's the God of grace. He's the God of peace. He's God almighty. He's a compassionate God. He's an omnipotent God. He's an omniscient God. He's God all by himself. He's a gracious God. He is a consuming fire. And once we have an encounter with him, we will never be the same. God wants to reveal himself to us. Here's what James says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. And Jeremiah puts it this way, if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. God is not playing hide and seek with us. He wants us to know him. He wants us to know him in a personal way. He wants us to know him and, and experience him like never before. And then watch, watch him use us in ways in which we've never experienced. And we too will not only pray dangerous prayers, but we will live it out in our lives each and every day. But it starts with experiencing God's presence and you and I will say with confidence, just like Isaiah did, here am I, send me. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'm not waiting for you to give me direction. I'm not waiting for any details. I don't know when, and I don't know where. But God, I avail myself to you for you to use me any way you see fit. I'm sick and tired of praying selfish prayers for myself and for others. But God, I pray a prayer of availability that you might use me any way you see fit. Now, if that's not a dangerous prayer, somebody tell me what is. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We do thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, for your word is quick and alive in our spirits. We thank you for this series of sermons that stretch us and challenge us in ways that we've not been challenged before. And God, we know that you are God alone and that in you we do live, move, and have our being. God, you never failed us. You've never let us down. You've been there even when we didn't think you were there. And so, God, we have confidence in knowing that what's before us, you're going to be there too. So, God, we pray for each person who's viewing this particular worship experience.
that you will push us to a place in you that we will pray dangerous prayers. And not only pray dangerous prayers, but our lives might be lived in such a way that it confirms what you're already telling us to do through our prayers. But we love you today. We honor you and we bless your name. It's in the powerful and marvelous and matchless name of Jesus, even the risen Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. And those who love God said amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some thumbs up right there. And just type in the margin, I'll go. Type in the box, I'll go. That's the challenge. That's the call. Hear my Lord. Send me. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. And I'll do what you want me to do. Isaiah 6 and 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. That's the challenge. That's the call. That's a dangerous prayer. And this morning, even as you've heard the word, you know, it did my heart so much joy on last Sunday. Those of you who were watching the broadcast, those of you who were uh, participating in the worship experience, how this young lady said, I want to give my life to the Lord. I just believe even today, even though we are virtual, I just believe that God's spirit connects in such a way, whether it's virtual, whether it's in-house, that we feel the call of God upon our lives and that we ought to answer the call, even if it were coming to Christian discipleship. Aren't you tired of living the way you've been living? Aren't you tired of not being satisfied? Don't you want more? Don't you want more of God? God has so much more for you that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have there entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. I want more of God, don't you? I've been at this thing a long time, but I, I still want more of God because I know there's so much more that he has in store. And so today, if you haven't accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, just go ahead and type in the box that, Pastor, I want to accept the Lord even today. Lady Kim is on standby. She, she's watching and she's waiting. And perhaps you might want to make Atop your church home. If that's the case, a lot of you, you know, you're actually tuning in from all across the country. And nobody is really, uh, not very many people, some are uh, convening uh, in-house. But this has actually become your, your virtual church home. So just type in the box, say, I, I want to I wanna be a part of Atop. Come on. And we, we are definitely going to get in touch with you and contact you and affirm that. And then those of you who are locally, once we come back in-house, we are going to celebrate the fact that you've given your life to the Lord. If you want to be baptized, go ahead and type that in. We're going to make sure that that happens. And I just believe that God's going to do something special in your situation. For the Bible says, if we but confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us and make us righteous in his sight. And then he also reminds us that he stands at the hard door and he knocks. If any man hear the voice and open the door, he said, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. Is that your plea today? Then we praise God for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I'm 
I'm going to sing it again. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, God, oh, God. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Praise team, can you help me sing that? Sing it, everybody. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can use. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Come on, tell the Lord, say, take my hands. Yes, sir. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Come on, let's take it up. Send me, Lord. I'll go where you want me to go. When God calls, answer. And remember, we must personalize the presence and attributes of God and watch God use you in a powerful way. Many of you already know I vindicated a couple of Sundays ago this little book entitled Dangerous Prayers by Craig Groeschel is part of the backdrop that I use to help um, develop these series of sermons. There's also a devotional out there on the Bible app, a seven-day devotional. I tell you, I want to encourage you to read it or get the book. It will, it will definitely change your life and give you a, a different perspective on praying dangerous prayers. That's a dangerous prayer that the choir just finished singing. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If that's your testimony, then you are actually stating a dangerous uh, statement and a dangerous prayer to God. And so we praise God for each of you today. 
Come on, let's give God some more praise and some thumbs up right through there. Even as we uh, continue in this worship experience, we want to prepare now for a time of giving. Uh, you see on your screen, for those of you who are viewing this particular virtual service, the different options that's available for you to give. Let me say again how grateful we are for your continued support. I tell you, this is an unusual season that we're in. Here it is, October is almost gone, and what has been seven months now, Lady Kim, since uh, this COVID hit and since our last in-house worship. But you have been faithful in the midst of it all with the outside service that we had, and, and we certainly praise God for you, and we ask that you will continue to uh, support the ongoing work of ministry and that you will continue to be faithful in your giving. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you give it shall be what given back to you again so if you are in house and you have an offering if you haven't already given then uh, Mary is standing by you can prepare to bring your gifts at this time but those of you who are viewing virtually go ahead and exercise your right to use one of those platforms and we thank you in advance for what you're going to give and how God will use you to help us to continue to extend this kingdom. Let's pray. God, we're eternally grateful and we thank you again for your presence. God, we are grateful for how you bless us even in spite of ourselves. Now, God, we pray for those who are giving today and those who have a desire to give. And God, we pray that you will stretch us even in our giving that we might do what's pleasing in your eyesight. So we love you and we honor you, and we thank you now for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray, and those who love God said amen. Come on, say amen if you can. another sacred moment in our service where we reflect on those things that Christ did for us so many years ago. So if you have not had an opportunity to prepare your sacraments, I ask that you do them right now as we prepare for the intake of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Send me, O oh Lord. I will go where you ask me to go. I will do what you want me to do. I will say what you want me to say. And I'll add to that, I'll even act how you want me to act. Dangerous prayers. The prayers of the righteous. Whatever you want me to do, God. If you can use anything, use me. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. First Corinthians tells us on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us eat together. And as you take your cup, let us drink together. Will you bow with me? God, we thank you for sustenance. We thank you for ability, and we thank you for capability. Right now, God, as we've taken in the bread and the wine, 
We ask that you anoint us, Heavenly Father. Help us to present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, so that we may go, that we may do, and we may say, and we may even behave wherever it is you want to send us. We do this with expectation, O oh God, waiting for you to prompt us to move. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you enjoyed yourself on today? Give God some praise, amen, for another wonderful Lord's Day that we have been able to share together. Again, we say um, thank you for joining us on today. Don't forget that about 2 o'clock this afternoon, from 2 until 3 o'clock, we will have our harvest uh, drive through We're going to give away candy to the young people. So uh, load up your cars and, uh, with kids and bring them through the Harvest drive through candy giveaway at 2 o'clock on today. And then don't forget, tomorrow, Bible study, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time on Facebook Live. Pastor and I will be uh, leading Bible study. We're still in the book of Hebrews. I believe we're in the fifth chapter. Is that right? Sixth chapter. We'll be doing 6, 7, and 8 on tomorrow, so join us for uh, Bible study on tomorrow. If you miss it on tomorrow, you can join us on Wednesdays via conference call at 12 noon for Bible study. So join us for Bible study. It's very important. Don't forget, early voting is still taking place, I think, until Thursday of this week. So if you have not cast your ballot, Vote during early voting time. Early voting will run through Thursday of this week. Uh, make sure you check the schedule to see uh, what time, and to make sure I'm saying Thursday is the correct date for the end of early voting. Um, uh, this coming Friday, Friday at 7 o'clock p.m., we will have one more outdoor movie night. Our movie will be Beauty and the Beast, Amen. So join us. Get the family. Bring your lawn chairs, uh, a coat, a blanket. Amen. But we're going to be there. A fire pit. Amen. Uh, it's going to be a little chilly, but we're going to be outside with our family movie night on this Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. The, the movie will begin at 7 o'clock on Friday, Beauty and the Beast. So please join us on Friday night. And then we'll see you again here on Sunday morning at 945. Don't forget daylight savings time so you get to sleep in an hour uh, later or get up and spend that hour with the Lord. Amen. With some quality prayer and meditation and study time with the Lord on next week before our worship service. Well, God bless you. We love you guys. Right. Thank you, Lady Kim, and thank each of you for viewing. And Lady Kim, normally when we uh, fall back, people are a little early, right? They, they forget and they show up early. Is that right? So we want, uh, we hope that you will set your clocks back. But Sunday school, of course, at 8:30 a.m. Is that right? And so we're excited about that. But we hope to see many of you uh, today at two o'clock and if you haven't uh, dropped off your bags of candy here at the church you still can do that they're in the back preparing those bags now to give away and so we look forward to seeing you all later today well god bless you and may the peace of god go with you and may his spirit abide abide to fulfill and fulfill to overflow in each and every one of our lives have a fantastic day and god bless you